Welcome to Movie Phones Unscripted. I'm Parker Posey. I'm here with Dre DiMatteo. We're talking about our film, Broken English. We're going to ask each other some of your questions as well as some of our own. You and Parker tend to play such great, quirky characters. What attracted you to this role and how is Broken English different from most romantic comedies? How do you feel about being called quirky? Oh, I think quirky is one of my favorite words. I'm sure it's your favorite <laughs> it word, really Parker. It really is. Kooky, kind of like <laughs> yeah. second. Yeah. Quirky first, kooky second. I like offbeat, too. Yes. That's always... Because um, I think people... I think there's so much in, in movies that's kind of... can appeal to a, a mass audience. And with the independent movies, you get more behavioral, uh, you know inspired characters that have issues like this but I think also real actors like to play people with problems and that might come off as quirky but quirky and edgy you get edgy too that's I get edgy the too. way it goes yeah <laughs> it's the worst. how do you think this movie is different than um other romantic comedies yeah well I I will say this because I Parker can't talk about herself this way so I will um what makes it different is definitely the way Parker plays this this character which is with, I don't, it's such fragility and so, oh man, I mean, I don't really know how to explain it, but it was just, you know, it's pretty basic, you know, the love story angle and everything, but the, it sort of it turns into a tragedy in so many ways, and it's definitely the way Zoe and Parker handled the material, and it was I feel the same beautiful. about you. I love it that, um, you know, mostly you read romantic comedies, and there's all this pressure to be funny instead of, like, seeing, like, something that's, like, heartfelt, and even someone who's in pain, like, she goes on a series of bad dates, yeah. you have your own betrayal thing that you go through and it's not, you know, you're not like double over laughing, but I think when you see something that's honest, you do tend to yeah, laugh at something. Like when someone honest. falls down in the street, you're like, oh, that's really I think it's a endearing. romantic dramedy. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I heard That's that another today. good word. They, they like to explain <laughs> things here. <laughs> you didn't even meet your co star, Melvin Poupeau, until right before shooting. What is it like meeting your cast for the first time, and could this be compared to a blind date? Oh, well, his name is Melville. <laughs> Did I say no? Oh, Me it is no, Melville. No, I got it wrong. And I got it wrong. It's Melvin. So, should I say it one more time? <laughs> yeah, let's take it back to one. <laughs> you didn't meet your co star, <laughs> Melville. <laughs> You know what was um what was um well you know this but when I met him we would hang out hang out I I have to say I wasn't very friendly towards him I wasn't exactly open because um of what I was busy projecting onto him in the part we'll but then out. but then when you know because we shot the the order that we shot it at all the the bed scenes ended up at the end of the movie and we did get That's closer towards the end of the film so. It's this kind of, I didn't want to um, create any kind of false intimacy. What's the most dramatic difference between working on independent film and television? On TV, you get to really work on a character for years and develop it and, and change it. It's kind of like theater. You can change your performance every night a little bit. If you make a mistake, you can fix it in the next scene. And um, the writers... The done. Yeah, are yeah. the writers there in television too, like, writers like bringing out... Your most interesting qualities. Yeah, it sometimes is annoying, but if you have great writers like Sopranos, it's a it's a gift, and it really is like working with a playwright and doing a play. That's so cool. Yeah. When is your birthday, and what are you gonna do for your birthday this uh, year? Uh, it's it was just my birthday. Oh, on Friday. That's on right. Friday night. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't. I'm so this sorry. So old now. <laughs> We're having a party tonight at the karaoke. Really? It's an awful place. Is Shooter going to play? Oh, I don't know. Well, he'll sing, I'm sure, once he's drunk enough. Which I'm sure Have you been doing be. some partying here at the, at the Sundance? Mm. At the dance? I went and hung out with a friend of mine last night, and that was it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we partied with you guys, too. You know what you missed last night? It was Heart to Heart. You guys watched I brought last series night. one and two. What are your own romances like? More comedy or more drama? Or would you say dramedy? Uh, I think I'd say dramedy. <laughs> Would you care to explain? <laughs> oh. You Violet. know what I heard? I don't know. Maybe it was in a fortune cookie. But it was, life is a, a tragedy for those who feel and a comedy for those who think. I don't know if that's true. I love that. But I kind of like... I love it. Life is a comedy for those who think and a tragedy for those who feel. I think I go back and forth. I do too. I think it's the cha-cha. Me too, sister. Um, have you gotten any updates about what Gracie is doing? 
Oh, Gracie is um, my poodle, my <laughs> poodle mix. And she is, uh, she had her final lesson this, uh, this past week. She is becoming a therapy dog. Oh, right, dog. right, right. Oh, She's no, a therapist Gracie. now. Oh, my What's God. What's the most unusual perk of, of Sundance? The most unusual perk? Really, the biggest perk is having seen this film for me, because I hadn't seen it before. So that's my answer. Yeah. I realized that the, both of the movies that I have here are digital films, and they were both a million dollars. So cheap to make, and, and it's like back to my roots, really, and how you know, small crew, tiny, because now the most independent movies here at this festival were are probably like $15 million yeah, budgets and $20 million, and they, they it's need... It's changed. Like, it, it's amazing, the, the freedom. Yeah, it's nice. That directors can have with that and the ease that the actors can have by working in it. Dre, I'd like to thank you, Dre, to Mateo, and to Movie Phone, and um, I hope everyone uh, runs out to see Broken English in its... Uh, when it's released in this summer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right on. That was... <laughs>